Hey guys, welcome to the second half of the engine pull video. I've got the car up today and I'm going to start by pulling the bolts out of that flex damper. So here's the bolts that I'll be removing. They're six millimeter hex head bolts and there's about eight of them around this starter ring here. And they need to be removed before we can unbolt the bell housing. So, all right guys, last night I think I got all the bolts out of that flex damper. But to uh, make this a little easier since I am working by myself, I have a little camera here that's broadcasting Wi-Fi live to my tablet. And I'm just gonna take this camera and sit it right here where it can see into that starter hole there. Let's see if I can get it to balance. Okay, that should work, let's see. Oh yeah, that's a great view there. I'll just take my tablet here and uh, we'll walk around to the front of the car. All right, now I can see in real time as I turn the crank. All right, so I rotated the crank a few times and it's clear that I have all the bolts out. Now we can start removing the bell housing. All right, before I hook up this engine, we're gonna get these bell housing bolts out. I got two 19 millimeter bolts on top here. One of them's already been removed. And then there's another one down here and one on the other side in the same place. I got the top bolt out of the bell housing and I thought I'd give you a look at what a bell housing looks like so you can get an idea of what we're doing here. Um, this here are the top bolts and here are the ones down on the bottom and that's it. That's all the only bolts you have to remove. So we're looking down from the top at the last bolt that I need to remove. Right there where that hot spot is. I can't really get a socket wrench on it and I can't get a regular wrench on it. Here it is on my spare bell housing. It's just very difficult to get to and that's why if you're working with a manual transmission car just go ahead and unbolt the torque tube and slide the entire engine off with the bell housing and everything. However, since this is an automatic car I don't have that option so uh, I've got to figure out a way to get in there to it. I removed the speed and reference sensor bracket and then I was able to get in there to that bolt on the back of the bell housing a little bit better. However, I found that a short 19 millimeter with a universal joint and long extension coming up from underneath worked the best. All right guys, so I got my crane chained to the engine now. I originally didn't want to work in the evenings, but I think I can get enough light in here. Um, I'm just moments away from dropping the engine and uh, I just want to get it done. So uh, yeah, I'm getting ready to uh, remove these uh, motor mount bolts. And then we'll drop the cross member and uh, hopefully that'll be it. All right, I'm getting ready to unbolt the cross member. There's two 19 millimeter bolts on each side and I'll be using my breaker bar here to do that. All 
All right, here's the cross member out. I'll shoot a better video tomorrow in the daytime, but for now I just wanted to show you that I got it out. Um, whenever removing the uh, steering rod, this is a nightmare to remove. So I always try and get it up at the firewall. It's just a 13 millimeter nut and bolt, and you'll have to uh, use a wrench on one side to hold the nut and it just pulls right off very easy like butter so uh just a little tip now i did have to remove the hose here from the power steering cooler before i could remove the cross member uh most of the time i unbolt the steering rack but i was just in a hurry this time so i just kind of threw this all out at the same time Yeah, I thought I'd give you a look here. I got the engine sitting on the ground. Here's that flex damper that you see in automatic cars. There's a snap ring right down in the center of that, so you have to undo that before you can pull the bell housing off. It looks to be in good shape. Probably would have went for many years, but whatever. I'm gonna put a clutch in. Oh, there you go. Get some better shots in the daytime tomorrow. So here's a better look at the cross member in daylight. You can see where the four 19 millimeter bolts go on each side. And uh, like I mentioned last night, it's much easier to remove the uh, shaft from up at the firewall. Here's a look at the engine sitting here. I'm gonna jack the engine up and then uh, put a board underneath it and uh, take it off the crane so I can slide it out. I have another job I have to use my engine crane for coming up this weekend, so that's why I've been kind of in a hurry to get this done.
All right, so I was removing the oil filler neck so I'd have a little more clearance as I pulled the engine out from under the fender well here. And uh, this is what I found. It's a RTV sealant. So instead of replacing the seals, they just gummed it up with this stuff. You never know what you're gonna find. All right, so I just got the engine pulled out here. You can see it looks like it's in good condition. So it should clean up and make a nice uh, spare engine for me when I'm done. Here's the engine bay with it out. I'm gonna go ahead before it gets dark and pull that snap ring out and get this bell housing out. All right, so I just climbed in the engine bay and I thought this was interesting. I'd heard a clacking when I was rotating the engine coming from the bell housing and it appears that there's a reference sensor broken off in here. And uh, yeah, look at that. That looks like uh, someone fired it up and it caught on the uh, flywheel or flex plate notches and uh, sheared it right off boy that'd make you mad after a build wouldn't it first thing that happens it takes your reference sensor off i had seen copper coming out of the starter hole and there was even like a string of copper and i thought wow somebody's had a bad time with a reference sensor but uh i didn't know it was this bad <laughs> oh well let's get this snap ring out of here and uh Let's get done for today. All right, so you'll see your snap ring in there. And uh, the way you get to it is you just push your flex plate back and then push that back and there you go. It'll be on the outside and you can spin it around wherever you want. Now I've got my snap ring pliers set up here to spread out. Getting it in the hole takes longer than that actual removal. There you go, there's the snap ring. Sit that down here, and this pulls off, and so does your flex damper. Oh, it's free. Now, I just have to remove the four bolts on the back of this uh, bell housing, and 
that's a complete engine removal. All right, so I've got all the bolts removed, and now the bell housing comes out. All right, guys, now that I got this stuff out, I thought we'd take a closer look at it. You can see where that reference sensor scored up the bell housing pretty good. And uh, this looks like a generic manual transmission bell housing. And for the most part, I guess it is. Now, it does have its own part number. And uh, these holes down here for the clutch slave are not tapped. So uh, it's not exactly the same. Uh, but it's a pretty interesting little piece. So this is your uh, flex damper on automatic cars. And this looks to be in pretty good shape. It's got some cracking, but uh, I don't know if that'd be such a big deal. But uh, let's look at the back here. It's pretty interesting. This looks like a transmission coupler that you find in the rear. It's pretty thick. You've got a starter ring gear here. I'd imagine that comes off. Yep, there you have it. There's the damage from that reference sensor. Oh boy. Um, you see this is an 09, so it's an 87 automatic engine so I'm guessing this is the original engine for the car I don't I wouldn't see why it had been swapped it just wasn't well taken care of which happens so uh, yeah the bell housings are a little different and as you can see there's a flex plate instead of a flywheel and then you have that rubber damper so I'll take you over here and then look into the uh, engine bay one last time. And there you have it. That's a complete engine pool on an automatic transmission car. I hope you guys enjoyed it and until next time.